guys, this is Cy from Sinai Software. Um, today we're going to do our third video in our tooltip series. Uh, this is working with BIM models in 3D Studio Max. And uh, what to do to clean them up and get sort of the models ready so you can actually do some uh, lighting and texturing and rendering. Like this is all the nightmare part of cleaning them up. All right, so the first thing that I want to do, and when I bring in this, is I'm going to always want to fire up Forensic and run through. Now, you're going to get three different types of outcomes in BIM models. Now, this one eventually, this one came from Revit, so it didn't have any empty objects, it didn't have any link composites, didn't have any CAD blocks in this one. Depending where you're getting this model, if it's coming from Rhino, um, you're going to have a different set of problems than whether it's coming from CAD or whatnot. In this case, we've scanned through, and no matter what, on any type of BIM models, you're going to want to check this. Empty objects, CAD blocks, link composites. All right, so since we've done that, that's out of our plate. So most of our work now can be done in Sculpt. And we've rewritten Sculpt completely, and I'll talk about that in one second. I'm going to go through and want to actually attach this stuff up in a way that I can use it. Now, since I'm working with BIM models, um, all this stuff has been pre-textured up, and it'll have Autodesk materials on it, and, and everything will be sort of sorted by materials already. Uh, so I can actually use that to my advantage. So I'm going to do a attach by material, and we've completely rewritten these. And actually, I'm just going to hit the timer here. Um, our attach uh, methods and our explode methods are completely completely different now. We've gone through, we thought up a completely new way to make these things really, really fast. Um, in the past, it used to take something like this. Well, if I did this with editable select, editable mesh, uh, it would take seven and a half minutes. Uh, if I did this with editable poly, we stopped this building at 20 minutes. Um, this building here uh, has about, I think it's about 52 materials on it. And this whole building here right now, about 40 seconds to attach that whole thing together. So that's a massive increase in speed. And um, also we have a lot of, you know, even if we go through like right now, let me just go and it's attached by materials. I'm just going to go attach the whole object and run through the whole object now is attached. Uh, if I want to explode this up by materials, it's now exploded all by materials. So our methods have gotten a lot faster from originally what we had in Max. I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you, I'm just going to attach up. I'm just going to go in the top window because I'm going to need to make this usable for me to navigate around this scene. So one thing that I'm going to need to do is, like I said, go through, attach all these up by materials and everything like that. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to do this because at some point you're going to have BIM models that are so big that if you were to say ex, um, select all in your scene, uh, it would crash. It would crash max. Um, we had a BIM model that we brought in the other day, and it had 280,000 CAD blocks in it to begin with. And we ran Forensic, and Forensic got rid of them. Uh, it took about 20 minutes, but it went through and got rid of all that stuff where it was actually usable. And then our attach methods, you know, just going through and attaching this up, just made it so that you can actually move around the scene, which is really useful. But what left us um, uh, as sort of standing still at the beginning was we couldn't just grab the whole building like we're doing now and attach it up in a fast method uh, because what it was doing was it was crashing max and we had sort of no way of, you know, sort of getting everything attached and using it. So we had to come up with sort of a different method and I'm going to show you that now in a second, now that I'm down to my last building. Um, and so what we came up with was a lot of stuff is very similar in um, BIM models. Uh, you'll have stuff that's balconies and everything like that. They're, they're all instance, but they're always objects that are sort of just the same and easy to manage. So um, let me just hide all this. and we'll get... So 
our other way of attaching things up, and if I just grab this balcony, you can see this balcony is not an instance. But if I was in the situation where I couldn't attach this stuff up, um, I could just select this balcony and say attach similar. And what that's going to do is it's going to go through and look for everything that's similar and attach it up. So now I can take that and hide that. I can go to the next thing, which is the window, and I can say attach similar. And it'll go through and it'll find all those. And so now I can take those windows and hide those. And I can slowly go through, you know, each piece of this building at a time and attach similar and sort of pick away at it in an easy enough way that I could actually get to the point where I could finally select it all and say, you know, attach by material at the end. So it's going to be a, a a process that you're going to run into this where you just cannot select the whole model without max crashing. It's just some pieces, you're just going to get millions and millions of pieces in there. So that attached by similar gives you the opportunity to just pick away at the model until it's something that's a little more manageable. So I'm going to go attach this last one up and we'll look at um, a couple other things that we're going to need to do and check on um, in case of double faces, isolated verts, sort of looking at how normals are because we want to make sure that everything with these buildings are sort of set. All right, let me just do an unhide all. And now you can see, it, I mean, this is light. I can move around. It's really nice. Uh, if I need to go go ahead and select something, I can. Uh, no problems whatsoever. All right. So my next process in here is I want to do a weld. And we've brought in a bulk weld. So we're going to select this building by building. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say use selected objects. I have 15 objects selected. And this is a live weld. So if I go down, I can do the same thing, just crush it down to nothing. Uh, but of course, that's not what I want to do. I want to get in here, and when I'm working on this, I'm going to look at the windows. I want to find the smallest amount of detail and make sure that I'm not ruining this. Now, you can see there's not a big difference in here, but I am welding up objects. So that's what I want to do. That's my next thing. So I'm going to commit to that weld, and that's in pretty good shape. So now I've gone through, I've attached this bit of material, I've welded it up. Next thing I'm going to want to do is I want to evaluate this building. So I'm going to isolate this. I want to take a look at this. I want to see all the normals. Now, one thing that's going to show you uh, a lot of flickering and is how far away this model is from uh, zero, zero. So this model is really far away. Now, the problem is, in, in most cases, you can't move these. Uh, because you're actually already importing this in another files a site plan so you can't go moving these around so that part you do have to worry about I mean deal with the flickering it's just part of it so if I look here and if I zoom in closer you actually can see that there's no real red faces um, if I look at this you just have to see that um, you slowly look around the model and just make sure now if you're have a building closer to the uh, center, you're not gonna have this flickering problem. This is just something because the model is so far away. But you wanna look at it and you wanna make sure that there's no red anywhere because you don't wanna make sure that there's no flip normals. All right, with that said, next thing I wanna do is in this case, I wanna find, select all this, and I wanna find all the double faces. So I'm gonna click on find double faces and this is going to run through all of this here. Uh, I'm not worried about that it's got this material on it. Uh, it. I can always change this back to what the material was in the end. All right, so I've gone through the check double faces, and it's come up with anything that's red has double faces, anything that green is not. So I'm going to select my red color up top, and now I'm going to say detach double faces. So it's going to now run through. The reason I did the weld first is because it cuts down. It makes it a little quicker once you've welded things up. I'm not exactly sure how this works out. Um, but finding double faces, the way that that works is as it searches and it selects a certain object, 
And here's all our double faces, actually. We'll remove that from that building. That's a lot of faces. So that's that's a little under or a little over 4,000 double faces in this model. Um, so let's get rid of that. And not bad. So we're getting there. Uh, let's just go back to this. Um, the last thing that I'm going to want to do in here is I'm just going to select this and I want to check for isolated verts. So anything that shows up red uh, is an isolated vert. And I'll show you, let's just exit out of this a second. I'll show you what that is. So um, if I take these verts here and now I was to copy these up and I'm going to copy that as an element. This is what isolated verts look like. So if I get out of this and let's just exit out of this object altogether. Uh, sorry, get rid of that. Okay. So if I was to select all this and I say, look for isolated verts, it's going to find this guy right here, the red one with isolated verts. So I can go through, I can actually go and exit out of this, select all these, well, select those and say, uh, fix, delete my isolated verts. And I go through and do that. So I am down to now, um, pretty much I've, gotten rid of, I've attached this up so it's nice and easy to use. I've gone through, I've looked at all its normals and if it did have flip normals, I have um, the standard max ones. These are from the modifiers alone. So you can just go unify normals, flip normals. We also have a normal um, from pivot and um, this is kind of useful when you're um, Unify normals don't always work in Max, and it's not because the function doesn't work. It's the way that normals work and the way it's looking at it. We're going to look at that in the future, but um, it's something that um, needs to be addressed. So sometimes you'll have all these faces that are just by themselves, and they have no face to reference from. There's no face next to them. So you want them all to point in a certain direction. So you can actually move that pivot up high above them and say... Uh, flip to uh, uh, normals to pivot and it'll flip all those normals to your pivot point um, This should be out at the end of the month. Uh, this stuff won't be here. This was for testing uh, But I hope this helps you out and gives you a nice light scene that you can work around and now you can actually just start doing some real creative stuff Thanks a lot guys. See ya